This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Perk, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Capes and Lunatics, episode 100, oh it's a penultimate, it's episode 199, anyway, I am Phil, joining me as always, it is the stash from New Jersey, it is, uh, oh, uh, it is uh, Charlie, the Professor Esser, sorry. I was trying to give myself a background, but you can't drop this. Uh, <laughs> and queen of the hoverboards, it is... Hey, y'all, it's Lilith Hellfire. Yay, Lilith. Hover, hover, hover. Anyway, yes. So, penultimate 199. That's week 200. Mm, take a drink. <laughs> that's right. We'll tell you what we're going to be doing later with our special guest. Oh, well, there's friend. nothing better than a penultimate episode when it's number 69. Shout out to Charlie and Moms. <laughs> I didn't even know it was that episode. I feel so sad. I didn't, like, oh. I didn't even realize. See you in the episode, sucker. <laughs> I didn't even realize either. I was like, hmm, what, which one is this? I'm like, oh, 69. Yeah, oh, there you go. Course, I was thinking just goes to show you gotta pay attention, but you know time flies so fast in this industry. Oh, in this Why? Industry. It seems only a few a few years ago I was recording this on a Kindle, and Rob Southgate was the first co-host of Super Connectivity. And he doesn't even remember it because, <laughs> because although it was a great day when the when the when the amazing Master Doom came and helped me be a part of my podcast. It was simply a Tuesday for him. Is that power, Chad, 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 Chad? I don't know, man. For some reason. He popped up at the perfect time. Did someone say take a drink? Yes. Yes. Why, is. yes. Yes, we did. Why, yes, that is It's 12 o'clock somewhere. I had to check on my phone. Yes, it is Chad. It's actually 12 o'clock here, so there we go. <laughs> That's right. After 12. This isn't technically day drinking. And uh, Chad Wilf is not. And even if it was, Charlie. <laughs> Chad, Lilith is not on camera because she, like, crashed a hoverboard into a wall. Yeah. Fake hover- hoverboard. She doesn't want us to see her hideousness. I the, am the big broken! Goose egg. <laughs> this is where she starts her mad uh, path to super villainy. Oh, my God. She got yeah. Oh regular my. villainy. It's like, they destroyed my face. I will bring all the hoverboards to their knees. She's probably I'm coming. I'm coming for you, She's pretty, she, swarm, swarm. She's I'm probably, coming for you, Elon Musk. <laughs> She's probably petty because you know she probably has to wear an eye patch for like a week. But now she's like, I'm hideously deformed. I am evil. No, 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 no. If I had an eye patch, I would be on camera. No, Pirate arts, come on. I would. I live for that. <laughs> Eyeballs and penises. And I actually heard an interesting. I actually came across a video that helped me explain why I love Fast and the Furious. And it's basically it's because they're modern pirates. I can see that. I, I forget whose video it was, but if I if I find it before the end of this uh, this episode, I'll let you guys know. It's, it was really interesting because I, I like it as like just like high octane guys being guys, like classic like Michael Bay, even though it's not Michael Bay. Fun. It is in the but Dom has his own code. They're like you know they they're you know it's not like legal, but <laughs> they live by their own code. They don't hurt anybody other than big you know entities who can afford it. By the way, speaking of pirates, I just want to give a quick shout Art. out because this was one of my last week books. Champions number four gets a, a quick visit from Lilith's favorite uh, mutant book, The Marauders. Yes! Did you enjoy it? I Art. enjoyed it with Captain Kitty Pride. I like her because she's also wearing, like, she's actually dressed as a pirate, which I like. I like that she's dressed as a pirate. It's not a good book, necessarily. It's a fun book, and that's what comics yeah. need. I'm tired of being in the qua- political quagmires, and just, I just want fun, man. It's hard. And I, it's got Bobby, I, I don't like, I don't like the whole Jack Frost look on Bobby Gregory, to be honest hard. with you. 
where he's got the icicles on his head. I think they're always it's like they're always trying to visually show you like his powers are always evolving or something. But yeah, it's it's always. Weird. But that feels to me like a step. It's back. a choice. It's a choice. You know, it's an like choice. I like I like my Spider Man and Amazing Friends Iceman. That is my Iceman. Just Don't make my way downtown <laughs> on an ice on an ice uh, sickle. Yeah. <laughs> That's my Bobby Drake, man. Always will be. Oh, but uh, Charlie Esser, have you been watching the Batwoman? I have, and you know, I, she is losing me. You know, uh, especially like why? Uh, what's your name? The the underground doctor, because you know, sure. Um, didn't just open with oh, there's an island. You can get a bunch of it. Go go attack that island. You know, go send your people to attack the Ninja Island and get all the ones you want. That's how you have to get it. I just can't really attack a Ninja Island because I am just a underground doctor. So do that. Let us go. Go attack them. You know, that that's like that seems like an opener. Since she's immediately going to open up and tell everything. Why not tell that? And then let the ninjas fight with the evil corporation. That's fine. Yeah, that's what someone's I, gonna win. That's what, that's what I always say. It's like, why can't you like lie to people? It's like in Marvel. It's like, oh yes, you're looking for like a time machine. Yes, go to Latveria. This kindly, this kindly old doctor will, will gladly let you use his stuff. Well, I mean, no, but not for nothing. It's like, yeah, if you want a time machine, go talk to Doctor. I wouldn't short. Okay, well. I wouldn't short sell it. I would convince them. Oh yeah, go do it. Just say, yeah, there's an island in the middle of wherever it is, and it's filled with ninjas. And yeah, they grow this stuff. There. Was it in the North China Sea? I feel like it was in the North China Sea, and only Phil might get that reference. I know it felt very tropical, so I don't, I don't get the North stuff. So I, I'm feeling somewhere in the, in maybe the South Pacific, maybe, I mean, maybe even in the Gulf of Mexico, because you know, because it's apparently close enough to Gotham that you can get there. So. Everywhere is close enough to Gotham when the story calls for it. It's called a MacGuffin. And plot conveniences. Is 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 Gotham sort of like Danny the Road and just it just goes. It's the room of requirement. It is where it needs to be. (laughs) Yeah, they have to do something. They, They need to cleanse the ghosts of the show so that we can move forward. Well, here's my thing. I just want a morally consistent Batwoman. I want to know. See, I, I to me, a Bat character has to have their code, whatever that code's going to be. She still figured it out, though. I understand. She has all these hopes and dreams on her shoulders, and she like, and they really are preventing her from being her, becoming her own Batwoman. But at least her yeah. and Lucius, Lu, yeah, her and Lucius are like finally made up. So there's that roadway. Yeah. yeah, I also don't like the whole kryptonite poisoning storyline. I, I don't know. It just it seems like a weird way to randomly nerf a character. Where and I get the feeling like we're gonna have like two other people in a Batwoman costume. I will wait. You're gonna get Lucas in the Batwoman costume before the end of this season. There's, a, there's no one else. You're a lie, young man. Lucas, put on the costume. You're a black person. Well, it's, they didn't have to be black, so it's really you can put anyone into it, clearly, and just the idea. But so it'll be like the real Batwoman uh, that they should have took from where it was the three from the animated series, just kind of rotating. I would actually be down for that. Yeah, well, honestly, why you don't have more than one, I don't know. Yeah, it just strikes me like it, it's the whole. Why, if we all just dress up? See, I'm here, they're there. It couldn't be me. Yeah, yeah but CW, CW do, they have, do they have the budget for three lead actor actors? You just have a stop person doing it anyway. Fuck just yeah. saying. Yeah. From the distance, <laughs> it's not that hard. You know, you just need them to look enough like... They need them all to look enough like each other. That slap some play. Vaseline. Slap some Vaseline on that camera lens and you're good to go. Whoa. Uh, ah, Vasily, the cameraman's friend. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, yeah, I have watched uh, Batwoman. I have also watched uh, Superman and Lois. I'm enjoying Superman and Lois, but then again, I enjoyed Batwoman for the first couple of episodes. I think you. What is going on with Superman and Lois? <laughs> well, I don't have 
Lois all of a sudden? I like Superman and Lois. I like the... And I realized, you know what I realized? What I, what I like about Superman, and this is actually why I don't have a, a very strong feeling towards Captain Marvel in the, in the Marvel Universe, is, and it's also why I like Captain America for another reason. Captain America is a military guy, but he is also not the most powerful superhero in the universe. Superman is the most powerful person in the universe, but he's not a military guy. He's a very down to earth, very human character. And they're like the and like I think the problem with with Captain Marvel sometimes is that she is this military, you know, punch it first, ask questions later kind of person, but also like the most now set up to be like the most powerful character in the Marvel universe. And I think that you have to have those two things separated. And for what it's worth, when we get to the Lex Luthor origin story in this one, the Lex of Earth Prime. Um, it is, he's going to punch some dimensional walls before it's over. You watch. Um, this this Lex, you know, this was a militarized Superman who is going and destroying destroyed his planet. So it is understandable, and you know, I like his kind of view on it. It's like, look, they always turn bad eventually. You know, it's like, yeah, it's great to have a benevolent Superman, but they, all, they they usually start out benevolent, and then something happens. Usually someone kills Lois, or Zack Snyder writes him. They and, just... Um, oh, I'll get that soon enough! Oh. I, got, I, got, I, got, I got, I mean, I got, I got notes and thoughts for days about what was going to happen in Justice League 2... Electric oh, Boogaloo, for sure. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you know the week you come back, Lilith, we're going to have to do su- uh, the Snyder Cut, because it's going to be out. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. So, uh, episode Can we two. we just of- do a live watch, special edition, and riff on it for the Patreon? It's like six hours! It's like, it's okay. like four to six hours! Okay. We'll break it up! We'll break it up! Marathon? <laughs> Is it a marathon? Yeah. Oh, there we go. That should be our marathon for Snyder whatever that, marathon. That, that podcast marathon thing. Well, I'm just going to rip another no, no another ca- orifice in no caves DC, or, no, no, cave, no super connectivity, no full stream ahead that week. It's just going to be straight Snyder cut all week. Through the right. We're nearing the end, I promise you, my friends. Oh, God. Uh, this would have been the first episode, so get up and go to the bathroom and come back. For, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's. I'm not it's, looking forward to it. I'm not. No. No. And and okay, here's what I want to say. The idea of Lois Lane. Can we talk about this now? Because we got. I got to talk about this. The idea of Lois Lane sleeping around on Superman is a very well established comic trope. Well, oh, not sleeping around. Because yeah. what the one of the plans was? Uh, are they still going to do it for Snyder Cut, where she was maybe with Bruce Wayne while he was? I don't know, and I don't care. And if they do, no, no. No, he cut it out completely. He won't. Add, they won't let them add that. He was just—he's just trying to hype it up. He's trying to explain the holes in the movie. Okay. Okay. He's trying to explain why he wrote a bad movie, and then other people had to sort of hammer his bad movie into something remotely. And like, he should know it doesn't help your argument when your argument is, "I was going to make an even worse movie." They, they were literally trying to make the they're trying to make the best of a really terrible situation. Oh. And they're, they're they're gonna get the clicks and the views and people are gonna talk about it for a week because that's the new that's the pop industry that's the pop no. culture Zeitgeist like attention span. It's gonna be And then we'll forget about it. It's gonna be Wonder Woman eighty four all over again. They're get, you know, they're gonna get the oh. the clicks and stuff, but then, you know, for a week or two it's gonna be people poo pooing all over it. Yeah, I mean the, 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 the Snyder bots will like it. Yeah. How many ever there are? <laughs> I am just going to say this. Okay, and this is my thing. The idea of Lois having someone other in her life than Superman, that is comics accurate. I have been watching... Mm-hmm. I've been watching... Superhero Catnip! She, she is Superhero Catnip. And she has been with Bruce in alternate universes many a times. But we've already established in this universe they are in a in a committed, loving relationship. And you're going to break that for Batman? Who, honestly, in this universe should be with Diana, obviously. In this, in the Zack Snyder universe, yeah, it I makes mean, the most sense. Yeah, because that Justice League animated stuff, yeah. 
Yeah, it certainly does. You know, if if she swings that way, which I guess she does, because she she's with Steve Trevor. She is bisexual, or maybe yeah, even and pansexual, and that's her business. Well, uh, she's Greek, okay? She's exactly. Greek. She's not a pansexual. <laughs> yes. Well, exactly. They they don't. They, it's different. It's different for Greek mythological characters. As it often is, and it's like, yeah, you know, that's a really, it's like the whole horse thing with Supergirl, she did like, Wonder Woman, Whoa. like, oh yeah, no, I can totally get that, yeah. Somebody's been watching Sasha, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. I love her too. <laughs> Casually yeah. Comics is a great YouTube channel, guys. She is great. I, me and Tristan love her. Her and Ask a Mortician are like probably the two things we both watch a lot. What Tristan really likes to find out about dead things. What, what happens on Thea's mascara stays on Thea's mascara. Yes, but, um... No, it's Except for that like golden armor, armor, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, well... Hey, man, know. we had to sell some toys, okay? Yeah, it's, you know... It's and they did it! That's the gag! The Funko Pops did bad! The T-shirts did bad! The Barbie, limited edition and normal, were horrible! Yeah, well, it wasn't a good design. You know... It was like Hawk I, Woman. It was like Hawk Girl. <laughs> it was like, you were yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's... Wings are difficult. This is one thing I'm going to say, which is one of the, you know, I am I am glad they've never really done a lot with Angel in any of the X universes because wings are really hard. Yeah, to make you them know? good. Yeah, yeah, it really hard to make good, especially if you want them to be like really real real wings. Like you know, Falcon's wings, they're basically just wings. Like yeah, 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 so yeah. they don't have to look. Yeah, you know, authentic, they, they, yeah, you know. They, they can have them do they can look fun they want. wing things when they want, but you know, when, for mostly it's just no, you don't, you don't just, have to see them flap. They could just go out, exactly. and just stick out, yeah. As mm-hmm. we'll, as we'll see in two weeks. Yes, we will. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's just. It's hard, and it wasn't a good design. I said it wasn't a good design. I said it wasn't a good design. I was the first to say I'm worried about 1984. Wonder Woman 84. I actually became a defender of it, but I will say I was very early on the, I don't think these are good designs. I think they're making some big mistakes on this. Uh, you can go back, check the tapes, go back when we first started seeing this, and I was saying that, and Lilith was saying, no, the fans will love it, but you know. And the fans didn't did like it, they didn't like the Golden Armor, the critics didn't like what the fans said, because it's a reminder of something better, Kingdom Come! That's why they put it in there! Yeah, <laughs> it just... The, 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 they needed see that was a film that I think they could have saved with better storytelling. And again, that and they it, didn't. And again, I mean, it's, if you wanted to go the golden armor, go golden armor. But it's like they set up this big backstory and everything, and she used it for what five minutes. But it was for toys. We're all going to be honest. It was for the toys. Well, also, and, it, the, and those particular toys did not sell well because it didn't translate well. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, half the advertising was around that stupid armor, and again, she wore it for. Like and you can see clearly where they were just leggings, actual gold leggings. I, I don't want to get into it. I, I, I don't want to get upset again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the CGI could have been better. It, I, I think a little right. I think they keep on short, short cheating uh, Wonder Woman. I'm telling you, they don't want, for whatever reason, they they don't want to put the money behind her, even though technically she is the most strong, she could be the strongest brand, especially if they want to go pretend like they're woke. Why are you shortchanging Wonder Woman if you're pretending to be woke, your feminist icon hero? Yeah, (laughs) it is weird. It is weird to me. I mean, does... uh... Like did Pearl Wonder go over to DC? I don't know. That's what. It, that's that's the thing. It's like we, I understand. Oh, there's some weird racist that is behind the scenes pulling strings sometimes, you know, or misogynist or what have you. And I get that that is something that exists. And then you have to have proper business people sort of move them to the door and say, "Yes, yes, okay, Grandpa, have a good day." It was great when Netflix used to come in the mail. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, you've got to be willing to deal with those people, and... I mean... But it just seems like... Cause it just seems it's like, weird. They don't want to do the TV, another TV show. They don't want to do animated. They won't put out another animated movie for whatever reason. When the Wonder Woman fans are hungry for it, they let the Wonder Woman writers of the comic book, no shade, no tea, I'm just saying, it has not been good for at least 12 years. I have not had a single good... Well, Agent of... Agent of Peace was good, but that was planned kind of before, and they just decided to throw it in, so that's all. I won't even count that. Well, there's a new Justice Society World War II movie, 
which I thought we already did once with, with uh, New Frontier. New Frontier, yeah. Yeah, but that was like the 50s, so now we're doing the 40s. So I think we're going to... But that is I mean, her actual own movie. Like, she, like she, you have the Wonder Woman movie, then you have the uh, Bloodlines movie, which are yeah. actually everybody loves. We just need a new Wonder Woman show. I, no shade to Supergirl. Nobody wanted well, it. Nobody asked for it. Well, she's on she her. needs a show. She needs to be back in the hearts and minds of American consumers. Well, that's that, yeah. that was the other thing, too. Uh, well, uh, Superman and Lois is going on hiatus towards the end of March. Then Supergirl, the last season of Supergirl is coming back, at least for a while, on what, March 30th. Although I, I, and they're doing extended episodes. Of, I guess they're trying to get that sweet, sweet advertising money. For Superman. So the, if it's an extended cut, you're going to watch more commercials. Because it's only on the CW app. So I'm assuming that's their plan. Superman Lois, okay. yeah. I mean, that works. You know. If it works, it works. And that's fine. I mean. It's just an odd choice. That's all. Yeah. You know, well, well I can. St- I thought yeah. I read on the hiatus thing. It's like, <clears throat> I guess Superman and Lois must have had a COVID break, you know. Filming and stuff, so I, I guess maybe they do, they don't want like a because Supergirl's going to go from the end of March until May when Superman and Lois comes back. I guess they don't want that gap there or whatever, especially in that prime real estate after Flash. That's not really prime real estate. Nothing really does well with the exception of Superman for now. Nothing has actually ever really done well post Flash. I mean, it it stabilizes it, but it doesn't like send it yeah. through the roof. It does do- it definitely doesn't match the Flash ratings at all. Nothing has. Nothing does. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, but it's, that's because... But, I mean, it's a better slot than, like, Batman. Superman can definitely hold its own now, though. It can do its own show. I wouldn't put it on Sundays. Let's, let's not get carried away. I wouldn't put it on Sundays. But it definitely can hold its own lineup. It does not need that post-Flash no, uh, spot yeah, at all. You could do that on, like, on a Monday or Wednesday or something. Well, I mean, to be fair, it is a Superman show. And that's what I to said. be fair, that is why we have a Supergirl show, because they were, like... Because DC is very protective of their of their trinity... Even they were. Though they, even though they treat them poorly. Well, I mean, I think maybe this is... Maybe having a Superman TV show is going to get us a Wonder Woman TV show. Is going to get us a Batman TV show. Is going to get I, us... I don't know. I don't know about the Batman. Show. Maybe we'll get a nice Yeah, Nightwing. We're not, we, Nightwing is more plausible because there's been at least two different pilot shot is all that I'm saying. And Phil will be so happy. No, it won't be like Nightwing and Bloodhaven. It's gonna be his origin story of him in the circus. I, that much I can almost guarantee you. If we get a Nightwing show, we might build up into the Bloodhaven stuff and kind of cut the Bruce years off, probably. Phil will be so, <laughs> will be so happy. The flying Grayson. Honestly, I'm all about That's the pilot that I've seen and read the script for. It's absolutely actually pretty amazing. I would imagine so. You're in a circus, you're traveling around the country, you're solving crimes. It's the Very scooby do, but like with acrobats. Yes. <laughs> Who does a woman guy in tight or woman in tight spandex? That's all that I'm saying. <laughs> I know. I would love to see the Flying Graysons. I, I just think... And you know, the thing about like a high wire act like the Flying Graysons is they could theoretically even not move with a single circus. They could go circus to circus. They could get loaned out. They could, you could put them in Europe one episode because they... You know, the flying... Because when you're a big act like that... Oh, if they did it as a retro... Oh, that would be so great. Oh, like, yeah, retro have, circus culture? Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't have circuses nowadays. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, yeah, we do. I mean, they're not great, but we have them. <laughs> There's oh, nothing yeah. left in a circus anymore. We can't have the animals, the, animals, the, the, the right. freak shows. Yeah. But we do actually still have Ringling Brothers. They come to Florida all the time. They actually have a base not too yeah. far, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah out yeah. that way. Well, you know, we have we have we have Vegas we have Vegas show acts, um, you know, and that's fine. Um, without the animals, actually, Vegas still has animals at least. So do they? they don't, um, well, they're actually now that Yeah, I was gonna say I thought that was the last act on the strip that allowed it. Uh, okay, I miss animal acts. I mean, I don't, well, they, 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 treat, they treated their animals well, but they do deserve to be out in the wild and things like that. But if you rescue them and they can't live out in the wild, at least treat them well, and they did do that. And, yeah, and, and the thing There's is... There's not Tiger King in it, you know? First of all, <laughs> let, me, let, me just, let me just make a simple statement about animals. Why does everyone think an animal doesn't want to be warm and well-fed? It's yeah. a very odd thing to say. Well, live you know? your life in a cage, though. It's like, hey, I'll, well, give, I'll give you three meals a day, too, Charlie. Us, everybody. Like, a zoo, even zoo enclosures are actually pretty too small for the animals to be there. Well, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I, here's what I'm going to say: They have a lot of entertainment because they, you know, they get to go on a show, they get to do a dance, they get to have things and get food and 
get stimulated, which is what most animals want. It's like, hey, to hear this, Philip. You and I, and Lilith too, we're all living in cages. We're we mammals, baby! We have all kinds of things coming through to stimulate us. Like, ooh, Netflix, and this and that and that. Yes, if we couldn't leave, it'd be horrible. But the fact of the matter is... Uh, we, we haven't been able to leave for a year, so it's... Exactly. Yeah, but I, I, mean, you could sit, you could, I mean, you could still jump in your car by yourself and drive around for an hour or two, though, Charlie Esser. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, if food was delivered, I ne- wouldn't necessarily do that. And that's why I haven't left, because it's called DoorDash. Not sponsored, but would love it if you were if you wanted to. This is what I'm saying. It's like if you're an animal and oh look, stimulation, stimulation, food, 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 happy, happy, happy. Oh, they're gonna bring someone for me to have sex with today. Yay! Unless you're a panda, because pandas are shy. And who says the panda wants to have a baby? That's rude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. It's that's the one. I know we're trying to save the species, but let it happen naturally. Don't just shove them in there with some Viagra. <laughs> you know, maybe sometimes a panda would rather go to college first. That's all I'm saying. You know, go to Europe! Travel the world first, then have exactly. children. Yeah. You know, gotta learn, you gotta master their kung fu. They don't have time for it, <laughs> oh. man. Nice reference. Kung fu panda. Kung fu panda. One that is a pretty solid trilogy, not gonna lie. Not gonna front. Solid no, trilogy. It is, it is. Because, you know, it was written by people who cared. It's funny, if you actually have writers who care about the subject matter and the characters, they actually, like, tell good stories. We weren't talking about people who care about the story. We were talking about the Snyder Cut. Yeah, we were talking about CW, WB, Warner's Media in general. Man, we <laughs> calling everybody out. Well, they... I love my DC characters, and they have been mistreated for far too long. You need the money. Get justice it. for Wally, justice for Tim, justice for Superman, and it feels like they haven't learned a lesson because, no offense, no shade, then this is still over there doing a big book, which is Justice League. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be... Yeah. They, they said that's the... And they're work. spitting things out of the bit. No! You know what? No! Let me, let me, let me actually... I would like to give some context to this, because I do think that this is... This is DC's eternal problem, and why I think Marvel actually does a little bit better at and a lot of things. Because, you know, the thing about... So, and, of course, I don't want to get into WandaVision right now, because we're gonna t- we'll are gonna talk about that on Super. Yeah, and we'll then finish it, so yeah. Save it for anyway, TV. so... But, you know, so, as I'm sure you all know, a lot of big theories didn't pan out. A lot of popular theories kind but of... But they did. told you guys that! <laughs> Well, exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But the thing is, and this is what I say, if you're only watching the show, you're not actually watching the show. You know, that Marvel products are designed for the social need. They're, 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 like, Marvel is surviving great in this culture because this is a culture where every nerd in the world can talk and dissect and discuss and build and grow and say, nerds! oh, and was this a reference to that? Yes! Nerds forever! <laughs> you know, that's the thing. That is the reality. That's why Marvel, is, because everyone knows that Marvel's attitude is, you know what? We didn't intend for it to be that, but wow, people really like the idea that that thing was that other thing. Let's just say it was, because that's how comic books have been in Marvel, in Marvel for centuries. Well, not centuries, for years. Is the idea that, you know, someone will go back and say, hey, remember that one issue, that one guy that looked at the other person weird? Let's say that that was actually the villain all along. And then they will write that story, it becomes a big hit, or it doesn't. And But the fact of the matter is, is that Marvel owns its mistakes and owns its successes and just keeps on moving forward. And I think, and this is what I always say, is like, I think, as I've always said, DC got really lucky in the 80s with uh, Chris Reeves, Superman, and, um, what's his name? Um, Michael Keaton's 89 Batman. Batman. Yeah, you know, that they got this bookend of a decade of really iconic characters that were standalone and awesome and everyone loved and really reinvigorated things. For them... And then, but then also, both of which had that strong drop off at the end, critically and, and, and popularly, 
popularly, you know, ever after Superman 3. I mean, who even cares? Uh, I do! Yes, I know. <laughs> Me and my six other people, there's tens of us! <laughs> the idea is, is that it's like Warner's never, never had to struggle... Like, as I've always said, never had to struggle with a red brown Captain America. A um, you know, never had to have what, what is it? Uh, was it Max Reed? I forget who had played Deirdre. You know, never had to try to backdoor pilots. Never had to do this kind of work before. And the fact of the matter is, is that Marvel fans respond to it and are really enjoying the idea of that theorization. And I don't know if DC fans are into it or. Or maybe they are super into it, but that DC doesn't know how to write to that or how to deal with... They used to, with Arrow and the Flash, and then it got away from them. They tried to do too much too fast, and look at us now. Yeah. Look at us now. You know, that's why I think the Snyder Cut is going to be a disaster, just because... Well, it's it's Zack Snyder. Like, what's the last good movie he made? I'll wait, and I will fight you. Oh, but if you say anything was good that he ever made, I never got why they let him do Watchmen. And then to turn around, let him do Superman and Justice League. Like I said, I enjoy Watchmen. But it's got it issues. It's, well, of course everything has issues. See, I like Watchmen because I'm a Marvel fan. And I can, I can get what Watchmen is doing in, in the translation. And I can see, oh, I kind of like that idea better. Now, the new The Watchmen, comics are superior. I'm sorry. And it no, just, I'm, the, thing, I, the changes that he made, I hate them. I hate them. And that's his problem. He doesn't like superheroes. That's why he got to make Watchmen. He literally told them, I don't like superheroes. Perfect. We got the perfect movie for you. Yes. Which is, I think, the mistake because, of course, Alan Moore actually loves superheroes. Exactly! He actually <laughs> loves superheroes and loves superheroes. But he was actually trying to explore... Ideas of who watches the Watchmen? Everything's not perfect. Know, Everything has you know, issues. He, you know, he, he had he had read you know Watchmen Supreme and said, "Oh, this is a great idea. Why don't I steal that?" And like <laughs> everybody, to be fair, <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm picking. I'm picking. I'm picking. Well, you know, take um, a drink. Alan Moore got picked on. Take a drink. But you know, but the idea. See, I like the Watchmen film. Generally speaking, I thought. He, he, he was able to deal with some of the weirder comic booky aspects. Um, I liked how I liked how the Watchmen television series addressed those as exactly. well and did it so much better. Like, yes. I, think, I think that I think the Watchmen television series really better than both the movie or the book. I will give you that, sir. I will give you that. I, you know, I will <laughs> say that. Oh, you know, they actually took the book and said no. This and. Because what the Watchmen television series did is they said, no, this is what the book says, so we have to acknowledge it, and now we have to build on it. Now we have to say, how does this go beyond? What does this mean beyond this moment? And that is what you have to do to have an excited nerd culture that will make your show an icon or your movie an icon. That movie was definitely meant to, meant to be one and done, but the universe at large, like those characters specifically, one and done, but the universe at large, totally gone for expanding, which the TV show did prove. Perfect yeah. idea. It's- now, that's my point. Zack Snyder, a one and done movie, Sucker Punch, 300, yada, yada, yada. No universe building required. That, the wrong person to build out your universe. That's all that I'm saying. And to be fair, when he does, he makes bad choices. You know, that's the thing. It's like he, he, he doesn't... Why did you say that name? I think he wanted to make Brightburn. I think he would have loved to have made a Brightburn universe. I think he would have been Burn. great. He did! He did! You know what? Well, that's the thing. You know what? Had, you I want- think if he was... Here's what I'll tell you. And I've said this before. You know, maybe they should focus on villain. I think Zack Snyder would have been the perfect guy to make a Legion of Doom series. Or I think he would have been great to build out the Legion of Doom he should have got Suicide Squad. There I no, said it, you know guys. What? Okay, you know what? that's the franchise he deserves. You know what? You know what? You want to do the Brightburn? Give him, a, have him make a one and done Injustice movie, Lil. Well, no, but no, because I, mean, I love Injustice. Yeah, and, and I don't want him to ruin that. Yeah, but that's all dark Superman stuff. I'm not going to say that Zack Snyder can't do a universe if you give him the right thing to work with. That's the thing. It's like they gave him the wrong things to work oh, with. Oh yeah, you know. It's you know you can you can you can tell um, 
you, you can tell Michelangelo to do frescoes, and Michelangelo will, will tell you, I don't do frescoes. And the Pope can say, you're going to do a fresco, and it's going to be beautiful. Well, you got penises on your ceiling, you well, welcome, Philip. <laughs> yes. But you know what? Those were beautiful penises. Well, I agree. I can co-sign. And he may have did that as to, 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 to tease. He definitely thumbed his nose at the Pope on that one. <laughs> but you know what? The Pope was right. It's beautiful. And, you know, I mean, but it was about making him work in a genre he wasn't comfortable with because the Pope knew he was good enough to do it. And I don't think Snyder is Michelangelo. I don't think he can work in a field that isn't his field. You know, I think that, you know. You know what we should have got? In all honesty, no shade. I'm not laughing. Y'all can at me. I think Michael Bay would have done an absolutely tremendous job with the DC Universe. E- e- DCEU. If that's the, if they wanted to go the same route, at least it would be colorful. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> explosions! I need more explosions in my superhero movie. Like? And it actually does know how to build a universe. I, you can say what you want. Oh, yeah, I like no, the Transformers no, 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 no. universe. Do you love? I like light, it. Do you love lens players, kids? You're not wrong, Lilith, but he would bring back Steamboat, and. And I'd be okay with it. <laughs> That's the sacrifice we have to make for an actual decent, watchable, fun movie not driven, derived in darkness. Constantly, always the darkness, no hope. Superman symbol means hope. Nobody's home, I guess. Yeah. I mean, really, that's the thing. I, I always thought that was kind of sarcastic when he says that in the movie. But, um, but you know, uh, and, but, but for what's worth, that, that is one thing I think uh, Superman and Lois is getting right, is the idea yes. that, that, you know, the way they have, like, like, I love that line. They forced their hand. I agree with you. They, they forced their hand. They're like, oh, we got to make a Superman show to clean up this mess because we are losing the core of who Superman is. <laughs> like, we don't want that associated with him because, you know, it depressed everybody. <laughs> yeah. and, and to be fair, the, the, the statement, uh, cool outfit. Thanks, my mom made it for me. That is, <laughs> that is the big blue cheese we all know and love. And I love Exactly. That. And I love that he's also dealing with his family and, and the things and the fact that his son has superpowers, but not, he's not Kryptonian enough. Man, Jor-El just comes off so awful in this. Jor-El is a jerk, and I love it. <laughs> Jor-El is, is, is a really just... Like I said, they're totally leaning into that Smallville thing where Jarrell was totally a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> and I agree. I mean, he was, he was insane in the whole Bendis thing. It's like, yeah, name me one version of Jarrell that wasn't at least partially a jerk. Yeah, well, you know, to be fair, Jarrell, jer- largely speaking, since at least, uh, what's it, uh, since at least Burns Run, always has been a jerk, you oh, know? Yeah. And it makes sense! You know? I mean, Kryptonians were kind of jerks. They destroyed their own planet. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and start with the burn stuff. Yeah, they were kind of more cold and emotionless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. And that's why that's why Superman actually works. Um, that's why he had to be Kansas country cornbread fed. <laughs> that's what makes him palatable, to be honest. As we've seen in Red Sun and so many other alternate universes. Well, you know what I think, you know, and, and again, it's just this idea that, you know, he is a being who, and I guess it, it's sort of that, you know, if you think about Kryptonians and having this super structured society and you obey the rules kind of thing, and then it's like, if it's that heavily bred in, and then you get an idea of goodness and decency and social responsibility laid on it from a uh, depression era, um, you know, Kansas farmers, yeah. yeah. You know, where they're actually good people, not the other kind of depression era dirt farmers that we don't Body and Clyde, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we, you know, like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it, it's a good, it's a different, it's a different way to take it, and then that becomes his moral compass, that becomes his center, and then that evolves. It's like Dexter, yeah. but in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I like what they're doing with Superman and Lois. I love that it's Superman and Lois. It's a great play on both Lois and Clark, but also acknowledging that it, she is Lois married is, to yes. You know, um, that she's married to Superman, and that it is less jokey. Because I always thought Lois and Clark was supposed to sound like, Lois and Clark, see, it's a history pun. And they're exploring, they're exploring being something. very disappearing. So, 
uh, Pa Kent is dead in this, I believe. Yes. Ma Kent's dead. And a flashback. He got relegated really to a flashback. Yeah, Ma, yeah died well. in the, Ma died in the first episode, yes. Oh, Ma, Ma is dead, yeah. Yeah. You had a reverse mortgage? Ma! Ma! <laughs> Well, you know, predatory lenders, that's what they do. Exactly. And to be fair, it's not like they were planning on leaving the farm to, to Clark. He lives in the city. He doesn't want to have to deal with this farm. And it, but know, it's his home! You should always give your child your children the option to be able to come back home if you can. Well, the bank gave him the option. You could buy, you could pay, you could, uh, pay out the uh, loan. We're not in budget debt! Okay, okay. The only, the only difference is, Lilith, is that their kid has a apartment in the city and a fortress of solitude. So it's you can't take your kids to the fortress of solitude. The kids need fresh air. I'm just saying. Actually, the kids probably should. And that's that's like my biggest thing. I think that you know, well, you know, I get the idea that you don't want to tell a little kid that your dad's Superman. Because first off, every kid says their dad is Superman. So you know, um, except for Tyler's kids, can mean it. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's that's the thing. So I, I can get it, but I also think that maybe they should have been more upfront about, you know, just so you know, daddy's work, but some very difficult situations. That's why he has to be away so much. And that, well, you know, we, that, you know, these are big family secrets. We keep them, and you may feel very different because of it, yada, yada, yada. Um, all right, here's, all right here's, but, my, here's my question. They have, like, the loan and everything, and, like, they're talking about money and stuff, and Lois, you know, because of Morgan Edge just quit. Just crush some diamonds, bro. Exactly. I was, was going to say, is Clark working? And if not, is the government paying him? Is the U.S. government paying him something? Who Sam Lane? Who do you think he is? Wally West? Yeah, but with the, we haven't seen <laughs> is he still in arts for cash? We haven't, like, we haven't seen him even talk about fouling a story for any newspaper or anything unless you know what they need to do. They need to say he's writing a book or something. But he yeah. wrote a book. Yeah, he, he called did, it yeah. Peter Parker. He wrote a book. Yeah. My pal I Superman. Mean, Photos by Jimmy Olsen. No, like in the was it late eighties, early nineties, he he wrote like a fiction book, a, a fiction novel, I believe. I'm just saying it'd be funnier if it was just pictures of Superman. Because <laughs> it'd be very Peter Parker esque. Yes. Yes. Um You know, it's 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 an it's a weird idea, you know, uh but superheroes don't always work and uh, you know, I'm sure it's one of these things where he doesn't eat, you know, it's like I don't need to eat, I don't need to sleep, I don't need to do anything. It's like I you know, my wife and kids need to, but then my wife has a job and that's good and we have money and I you know, maybe he has super investing skills, so they're just like, No, I you know, I had a dollar and then I invested and now I'm Just you know, push some diamonds and sell it. <laughs> and maybe he does that too. That's the thing. Maybe maybe he's like, you know, don't ask me where the diamonds came from. But they're, they're legit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some, and for what it's worth, that that that, it, that that's sort of one of those things where, oh man, the future ruins a lot of stories because you can't just sell. Hey, I got all these diamonds here. You want to buy them? Because it's like, are these blood diamonds? <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not. Although to be fair, how the- I stole them from Lex Luthor. None of your damn business. <laughs> To be fair, the diamonds that he creates may not be as high of a quality as we think. Um, he's making a diamond, but, you know... Super quick, should, yeah, it does. Yeah, I get what you're Yeah, saying. you know, it's like if you actually get a little... It's a good diamond. You know, it's a little flawed on the left It's a good E-class, E-class diamonds, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to look nice. It's going to look nice. But is it? Is it? Uh, it's got it's got the color and the clarity, but it doesn't have the character. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. And and to be fair, as anyone who studies gemology for five minutes will tell you, diamonds are not rare stones. They're only Heck no. because because of, of the supply and the the, the, the manipulated the market. Yeah, it's a manipulated. Zales market. can get it too. Zales can get it too. <laughs> Which is why you should always buy manufactured sapphires. Manufactured sapphires. Manufactured everything, honestly. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. That, that whole clear aluminum stuff, that's beautiful stuff. It looks great. It's, you know... Moissanite is amazing. Moissanite is amazing. Exactly. There are so many... Look, look, just ask any rapper. Don't let the rapper tell you they're wearing diamonds and platinum. That's white gold and moissanite, okay? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, hey, it... Because what are you wearing it for? To, to, as an investment? No, you're wearing it to look nice. Yeah, this jewelry's a horrible investment. Yeah, oh, it is, honestly. 
Um, that's why you buy, that's why you buy fake pearls, right, Thomas Wayne? That's I'll tell, look, look, I will tell you that they were probably the public pearls, the dupes, and she had the real ones in in the safe. That's how you do it when you're super rich. Or, or to be more, or to be more specific, it, it wasn't that the pearls were fake. It's that the it was the strand. Yeah, the strand was cheap. The strand was poorly done. They didn't, it, it, they didn't have the double knots. <laughs> exactly. You know, there's certain... And again, it was a replica. Who cares? She's probably like Mark Simpson. She pulls it out of the drawer, cuts a piece off, puts it on. Exactly. Leave the pearls alone, man. And Let's get the comic books. <laughs> because I heard Charlie had a huge stack. Hey, I got a huge stack. So let me start with my indie of the week. Hey, I hope we all got an indie of the week. Um, my corner. indie of the week. From the good folks at Aftershock Comics. Yay! We got an Aftershock comic! I'm so proud of you, buddy. Oh, yes, we got it in your store. That's awesome. Yeah, and you notice that SOS, Save Our Stores, or Save Our Shops, is also Aftershock. Um, this is a fun book if you want to read about how comic books inspired a lot of artists and writers. Uh, with folks like Cullen Bond, Steve Orlando, Leela Lees, Jimmy Mc. Kelvy, David Mack, uh, well, there's a lot of them. Um, David Mack. A lot of great people in this book, a lot of great stories about how comics inspired them. Uh, so as it's free, read it, and then feel happy to be going to a comic shop. Um, but the book While they last, if you don't support them, they won't last, guys. That's right. Yeah. Nuclear Family, number one. This is a really fun book. I bought it a, a lot of Is that the last week? Well, it might have come out last week. I don't know. Um, I grabbed it this week. Okay, because the one from Aftershock that came out this week that I got was Undone by Blood. Oh, okay. Well, we can talk about that next. Um, <laughs> but Nuclear Family number one, um, It was it, basically the idea is is it's set in the 1950s, just after Sputnik come, comes up. Uh, Dad's a used car salesman and a ham radio operator, and he just got a brand new antenna, and then... The day he turns it on is the day that there is uh, an attack on Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by the Soviets. Obviously, we all wait. Is this blast from the past? <laughs> uh, something. Well, I don't know because, and they're all they all hide in the basement, you know. But there's this whole thing about how his ham radio seems to be picking something, picking up a radio transmission. All the houses in his neighborhood are destroyed. But his is the one that, when he comes out, it's the one that's left standing, which is something that bombers will do. They will focus in on a certain object while they're while they're flying, either through radio signal or something else, to orient themselves. At least that's what they used to do back in the old days. That is arguably why the 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 um, cathedral at Cologne was spared. Although that some some people say it's an urban legend, but basically he comes out. Uh, he gets immediately uh, surrounded by uh, soldiers who say, halt right there, commie. And then we get the blurb of next issue, which is, forced to contend, literal fallout in a Wisconsin suffering from nuclear winter, where almost all civilization has been wiped from the map. The McLeans now have to wonder, is the year still 1957, or has something more shocking happened? Bum, 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 on show March 21st. Then you get this great guide uh, to uh, a true American's guide to communism, where you learn all of the important warning signs and then what to do in the event of a of an atomic bomb blast. Put your uh, head over your hands over your head and get under the desk. Well, no, it's, a, it, it's make yourself bot. small to appear less threatening. Run in a zigzag pattern to your nearest uh, nearest. Uh, uh, pull out shelter. Um, don't look directly at the blast unless you bought nuclear vision sunglasses for nine ninety nine from this. Future so bright, gotta wear yes. shades. <laughs> Find and care for the injured. Perform amputations as you see fit. Comfort the dying. Contain dead bodies so no di- so as not to spread disease. Stay positive and thank God you're an American. Yeah, so that was good. Whoa. <laughs> Fun backup backup thing is the bequest is a great series. It kind of seems like okay uh, urban fantasy, but it's like okay now regular urban society and now people are starting to realize magic is a thing and you know and this guy our 
our, our old fat guy who's too old for this uh, has to sort of clean up the messes of the various gangs who are uh, starting to misabuse magic. So, uh, just a great book. Uh, I'm interested in the bequest and uh, everything else. Aftershock seems like it's a, a real up and comer here. Well, I've been kind of screwing about Aftershock for a while, but it's okay. I'm glad that you finally picked up an Aftershock book. I really love I that company. After- I have I have had a couple other Aftershocks before this, but that's okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, I forget which ones I, I got, but yes, I did. Okay, yeah, I, I really like their company. They seem like they're kind of steeped in the st- stories based around nostalgia, which I like, which is what uh, Undone by Blood is kind of like a, about the 1930s Great Depression and a guy that just is really into Western novels, so he becomes like a literal gu- gunslinger, kind of inspired, you know, by the Bonnie and Clyde thing. Oh, on a revenge story. So yeah, it's Undone Blood, uh, The Other Side of Eden. It was written by uh, Lonnie Nadler and Zach Thompson with art by Sammy uh, Kevla. And it's a five dollar book, but it is worth it. The art is absolutely stunning. And if you're like if you like that throwback story of like, you know, cowboys and gunslingers and you know, like that body and clad whole thing, I think this might be right up your alley. Yeah. I noticed that mine's a five dollar book too, so that may be that may be the um Aftershock price point, but to be fair, they do. No, have- I've seen three ninety nine books, but they do have very nice quality um, artwork, and yeah. they do actually pay their comic book writers and uh, oh, artists yeah. fair wages. Just exactly. gonna put that out there. <laughs> and to be fair, you do want comic book writers and artists to have a fair wage, you know, as fair as you know as you can sell the book for. And I think, five, you know, that's the thing. Now that now that I'm now that I'm now that I'm independently wealthy, a five dollar book doesn't scare me as much as it used to. Yeah, a lot of the indie books tend to be four ninety nine, and I'm 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 just okay with that because they do have to compete with the big boys. They do have a small. They have to pay more for their transport and stuff. So I'm just I'm just totally okay with that. But I just like to make you guys aware of it because I know yeah. sometimes that last five dollar book can add up when you're at the register. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, that's something. I well, I remember when I was poor, and yes, it it was because I have I have been out of work a lot in my life, and comic books became a really bad habit. Um, worse than crack cocaine, I will tell you. Really? That. <laughs> Comic book? Yeah. Honestly, yes. Because you, you know what? You can, you They have rehab for crack. They don't have rehab for comics. Then you just get people calling you a nerd. That's it. Put right. the comic book down, nerd. I was going to say, we could do the rehab for comics. It's called a bully. <laughs> All right, I guess I have to mention this because it's, it sets up most of the DC going forward. Infinite Frontier number zero. Okay, what's what's going on on Infinite Frontier, All right. aka Five G leftovers? So remember, so remember, well, it's setting up everything. Uh, so remember, Wonder Woman. You know, Diana's died. Uh, she gets uh, offered a place. You know, in the big, uh, you know, with the big cosmic figures of the DC universe. But then. Uh, She's like, oh, I want to make sure my friends are okay. So she has the Spectre take her on a little tour of the DC universe, you know. So we have to set up a whole lineup. First, we get Superman arriving at the scene of a battle. And he's like, oh, what happened here? Who, you know, and they're like, oh, Shazadam saved us. He's like, Shazam? No, Shazadam. And yes, it's Black Adam. Shazadam. So he is Shazadam. Oh, more like Apollo. Shazam! Oh. <laughs> Nobody tell Rob. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, so of course... It's Super- got the Zuz in it. It's fine. Superman <laughs> wants to believe that, you know, Shaz- you know, Black Adam has reformed and Flash is like, man, you see, just see the good in everyone, don't you? No, this is Jonathan Kent, correct? Well, no, this is Clark standing there right now. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, Black Adam could reform. He was the original, like, guy that was... Noble enough to receive the power. He had some bad days, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not for nothing, it was a slave-holding, evil empire world. Was he really that outside of the norm? I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I think he got judged a little too harshly by Shazam. And maybe if they had sat and had a nice talk it out, maybe they could have said, yeah, you know what, you're right. Maybe I should fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. Instead, instead of, uh, yeah, instead of, uh, you know, Trying to make myself king of everything, you know. Which also maybe would have solved the problems if he said, I'm king of everything. No more slaves. Why did your eye drift over to my body? You know? Anyway. But so Shazadam is a thing. So that's good. Oh, yeah. We'll Um, see how long that... Yeah, uh, because Black Adam's going to be in Bendis' Justice League book. So, you know. 
Okay, well, I mean, sure. I mean, they got to give him a redemption arc before the movie, after all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. See, there you go. Joker kind of, well, I guess. Yeah, Joker kind of proved you kind of have to, so yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, oh, he gets to be Jesus in the Zack Snyder's cut. So, oh, God, you know. that comes out next week, Joker number one. Yeah. I will, um, arg. I will read it. Arg. Or, I will arg read it, okay. All right, That's yeah. one thing I will say about the Doom book recently is he was just as evil in the Doctor Doom self-titled book recently as he is in every other book where he's the villain. And evil. so he... Evil. That's just Doom. who he is. He is yeah. evil Doom. It's not that he's evil. It's just that he's so egotistical and self-centered that he only cares about himself, his wants, and his needs. As Satan says, hubris, it's my favorite sin. You know, Why did your eyes grow? him every oh. time. <laughs> it does, man. It's the best sin, because you just think you're doing good. Oh, you just beat these people. And me, it's me, like, me. Oh, a lot of anger and wrath there. A lot of, se- a lot of the seven deadlies. Gotta watch out for those Definitely seven jealous deadlies. and definitely envious of that dude. That's why he wears green. I'm just saying. <laughs> think anyway. about it. So uh, when does this take place, Phil? Is this this, this is setting up the current stuff. This no, this is, is setting this, up the current well, stuff. So we've washed away the the other stuff. I mean, so is this the? Well, no, 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 no. Wait, don't say don't say the current stuff because I think I still see Superman books out there. Is this the not too distant future? Is Wonder Woman actually dead in her own book? Yes, yes. Oh, this is actually where we're at. Okay, she's so on, she got Wonder killed. At, she got killed at the end of Death Metal. Yeah, because I'm gonna get the okay. Wonder Woman stuff. No, yeah. Okay, so and, this and is we're a, kind okay. and we're kind of setting stuff up that you know this is how some of this stuff is how we're gonna get to that future state, those future state books, and some of these things. So okay, okay. So they basically sort of like how they okay so so they're trying to do a Wally West. Oh, we're gonna get the Wally yeah. West too. <laughs> no, no, but you know they killed they killed off uh, Barry Allen, and Wally West was the Flash for the longest time. They wanna they wanna recreate that. It's like okay, we went from Jay Garrick to, to yeah, we'll see Barry Allen. Then we had Barry Allen die, and we actually had Wally West take over, and we met, went forward. So now this is we're Wally Westing the whole universe, the good Wally West. Um, not the bad Wally West. Not the, whole, um, not the whole universe. Not the whole universe. Bruce Wayne's still Batman. Bruce Wayne is still Batman, that. yes. I mean, Clark Kent uh, is still Superman, although his son's still out there. So, I mean, we're... All right, but anyway... We're not there yet. Okay. But then we get to the Gotham stuff. Somebody... Uh, thank you. are welcome, Rob. Uh, somebody attacks Arkham with Joker gas. Supposedly Bane is dead. Yeah, I'm sure that'll last. Um... It should. He's the worst villain. Oh, yeah, it should. No one we cares. just make a new Bane. It's like literally just, he's got... Give somebody some him. drugs. Yeah, I know. Exactly. It's like literally... The son of Bane. Bane. The son of Bane. Mark my words. And they're basically trying to have their cake and eat it too with the birds of prey because uh, Cassandra and uh, Stephanie Brown are, are out there as uh, Batgirls Lilith and Barbara sitting there as Oracle saying, you know, her implant is, you know, like kind of on its last legs. So, you know, she... When it, when the Somebody get Felicity on the phone. When the situation and the writer demands she can go out there as Batgirl, but she's not going to go out there as much as Batgirl. Well, no, wait. Well, does that mean that she can Batgirl when she needs to, but not always because she has a thing? Or is it that she's in a wheelchair? She she, she can walk. Can she, walk. Has, she, she has it. She had it in, like, when they started New 52, they put an implant, uh, like a microchip in her spine so she can walk, but it got damaged yeah. during Joker Wars, so now it's like. You know, if I exert too much, you know that thing's gonna burn out eventually. So she's gonna pick and choose. Can they just get a new new chip? I don't know. I mean, that's the whole point of the chip. Is like, I don't yeah, know. That that was was that's, that's, it was experimental and expensive. That's the beauty of New Fifty Two, Charlie. I don't think we ever got the origin of where that chip came from. So it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, we didn't get the origin for much. No, but the, the, the here's the thing: once you make one, you can make more. That's yeah. So that's a NASA. <gasps> they keep on making more space. It's not the exact same thing. That's why they're not as durable and sturdy. Yada yada yada. Uh, sure, Jan. We gotta sure, beat, Jan. We gotta beat the commies in space. Come on. Anyway, all right. So yeah, I mean, in the, the, I mean, of course it's Gotham. So it's like yeah, you get gr- Grifter. I guess is going to be around. Uh, <sighs> and like, like a year or so ago, Bullock was commissioner. So now Montoya, I guess, is going to be commissioner. Oh, good for Montoya. She gets a promotion. Isn't she the question? Like, when needed. Don't, they do, <laughs> don't, don't they do, like, background checks on these people? I guess not. It's got, uh, come on. Come on. Yeah, that's your own question. 
You're not they ran, ran in a giant bat suit. Be the symbol of their city. They, they had a whole little freaking lamp on top of the police station to call them. Come on, Charlie. You're not a raging alcoholic. You're not a mass murderer. Oh, you're hired. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take it. Is, is Cobblepot mayor again, just so I know? <laughs> not yet. No. That would be even better. <laughs> All right, Lilith, are you sitting down? Let's get to the Wonder Woman stuff. Uh-huh. Okay, so since... Since Diana is dead, uh, Hippolyta is going to go to Man's World and take Diana's place as uh, in the Justice League and all that good Don't stuff. Don't we want Donna Troy and that other girl? I mean, wait, they wait. even had their own uh, armors. Well, uh, I, I don't know what they're going <laughs> to So gonna they do. don't count? They haven't mentioned Donna Troy unless she's going to be in Titans Academy, but I mean, so Hippolyta is going to Man's World and she even says she's going to check up on that new Wonder Woman or that Yora that Yara or Pla- yeah. Okay, so yeah. she's going there as Hippolyta, not or Hippolyta, not as Wonder Woman. She's not like, well, I guess I have to, I have to do it myself. She's not yeah, because I don't like, think like in the in the previews for like the Justice League stuff, I don't think she was wearing Diana's costume or anything. So yeah, I so she's, she's not like going by the name Wonder Woman. Yeah, I don't, th- I don't think. Yeah, my and name th- is uh, Hippolyta. Go away. And then since she's and then since she's leaving the island, guess who's going to be in charge, Will? Who's going to be in charge? Nubia. Oh, well, that's nice. You know, it would make more sense for Nubia to come to Man's World and, you know, her to stay there, but that's just not good storytelling, apparently. You know, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't. At least we put the black woman in charge. At least we did that. Lilith, we're going to have Yara out there, too. We can't have two women of color, you know, as the main. Yeah, you're you're right. You make a good point, fella. You make a good point. And to be fair, Nubia was named in the 70s. And... She's just made from a different color of clay, guys. Okay? Yeah, no, 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 actually, the name Nubia. I would, like, if her name was, like, you know, I don't know, Cassandra or something. If, it, if it, she had a different name than Nubia, Nubia is a. A lot of people like the name Nubia. No one, I, I've never really heard anybody have any problems with it, so. Okay. I, 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 I well, you know, I, I've always. Well, let me put it this way. When, um, if you ever see. The Will Smith uh, Wild Wild West, which I don't recommend. Uh, I love that movie! Screw you, Charlie! The only like, Will Smith movie I actually like! Okay. And, Not to say Hancock, of course, obviously. I actually like it too, but, you know. It I, is I, terrible. I know, it is I know terrible. It, it, it has a lot of problems, and one of the things, it's like when, when uh, you know, Miguel Loveless has his. Brides of all the continents, you know, Asia and, you know, America and Nubia. It was because that's what he calls Will Smith's character yeah. drag. Well, you know, know, they just can't help but put a black man in drag. That's a thing. But we won't get into it. I'll say that for Hollywood well, species. You know, to, be fair, to be fair, a man. <laughs> did it so you don't have to, you losers! Just say it. He told you all that. Eddie Murphy and kept his career going being with that. Confused for being a beautiful woman is a common trope. Going back to Greek uh, comedies, which maybe tells you a lot to bring it all full circle. That's, that's how Will. That's how Eddie Murphy made his second half of his fortune. Come on. Yes, you know, honestly, uh, and to be fair, to be fair, Will Smith is a very beautiful man. So, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue the point. You know, <laughs> it's like. But ever since then, I've always felt real uncomfortable with the word Nubia because that Michelotto Lovelace, which is not a good Michelotto Lovelace, that's what it makes me mad about that movie is that Michelotto Lovelace. That's not Michelotto Lovelace. They should have gotten Peter Dinklage to be Michelotto Lovelace. I know no one knew who Peter, Peter Dinklage was at that time, but he was alive. Wait a minute. What year was that? He was doing stuff. He might have not been Game of Thrones, Peter Dinklage, but he was doing no, no, stuff. No, no, no. He wasn't Peter he wasn't Game of Thrones, Peter Dinklage, but he was still Peter Dinklage. And I think just... Because I saw him in a net tuck back in, like, the late 90s, so... Yeah, no, but that's my thing. It's like, if they had just gotten Peter Dinklage, yeah. or just a real short person to be Michelotto Loveless, that would have been a much better film. And I think that the whole weird guy got blown up in a thing, and that's why he's short... Yeah, that's like Cotton from King of the Hill, yeah. Yeah, that, that to me, really, that, I think, hurt the film more than people really realize. Because I'm a big Wild Wild West fan, and Middle Out of Loveless episodes are always the best episodes. 
Okay, anyway. Oh, all right, right, so, oh, all right. Did, did anybody pick up my, my future husband, uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, Berserker book? Berserker number one? No, did you read it? No. Of course I picked it up. It's from Boom, in case you don't know. It's uh, Matt Kent and Keanu Reeves, and the art is by Ron uh, Gurney. Uh, it's a $5 book, just let y'all know. But, yeah, basically this is Boom's version of Bloodshot, with a little bit of Conan and a little bit of John Wick, because, obviously, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> but, uh, the artwork is absolutely stunning. The story is a little straightforward of a punch him up revenge story. But, you know, that that's that's what Keanu Reeves is comfortable with. That's what he knows. Mm-hmm. I'll let him tell the story. I was I was I was eyeing that book. I didn't realize that was a Keanu Reeves book. So, you know. Yeah, that's the book that they were working on, the whole Kickstarter, the whole thing. This is the oh. fruit of those labors. So I'm super excited. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to stop having sex with him in Cyberpunk 77. Get over your 277. Get over yourself. But this is, this is the second thing. This is the second thing I can do to be close to Keanu Reeves. It's fine. <laughs> so, were you done with Future State or is there more to tell? Because I know we were in the middle of Wonder Woman. When we- no! No one cares about DC, folks. Give it up! I can, I can stop to say, you know, Alan Scott comes out to his children in the issue. <gasps> Was it tasteful? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because you know, and 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 again, I mean, Bar- Barry Allen is going to be part of the the group watching the multiverse. So he basically tells Wally West, "You're going to be the Flash again." You know, is he no longer blue and in the chair? No, no, no. Is- he's just a regular speedster again. Yeah, yeah. So he's just he's just right. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't read all the books. I don't know. Okay, okay. I just like that succinct uh, summation. Uh, all right, all right, all right. And the one uh, and the one last thing I wanted to say, I wanted to watch a little. Oh, I can't see her roll her eyes, but uh. Yeah, I told I was telling you the other night, Lilith, where it's like you know, uh, Oliver Queen is uh, with Black Canary again, and he's bragging about how he has more money than uh, Bruce Wayne again, since Bruce Wayne lost all. It's not hard to do. He's bankrupt. And at the end of that story, we see you know, in all in in all uh, Hawkeye House of M style, uh, Roy Harper is just alive again. He's like he's even like I don't know how I'm alive again, but oh. Because the whole multiverse got reset. Actually, yeah. he's insane. I don't know how I'm alive again. That's what, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's literally like, he's like, he he's, talks about the hours in peace. Damn it, man. Yeah. He's, he's leaving a message. Actually, so. at, least, at least when they brought Tim Drake back, they actually retconned the story. They go, oh, oh, guess I'm alive again. Well, the entire multiverse was, yeah, like reset. So he's like, yeah, I'm alive. He's like, I don't know how. Did we need to reset it? Like, but oh, that means so that he can't. remembers himself dying? That's like weird. I guess. Yeah. It's like, hey, I died and clones, clones. It's it's Cretella all over again. Mark my oh, words. Um, hey, just to make little unroll her eyes, Sabrina the Teenage Witch from last week. Ooh. Yay! Y'all caught up. I'm all caught up. I like. Is this going to continue? Because it was fun. Um, and it seems like there's. It, it seemed like they were saying yes. There will be more Sabrina eventually. But um, yeah, this was a fun book. Um. I like how uh, Sabrina outsmarts the uh, evil witch at the end in the little wizard duel. Um, I like that uh, basically. So I'm weird. I'm, I'm confused here. So like they like turn in, they like merge into one being when they become the Wendigo. Is that what we're supposed to be doing there? Oh, oh, that's that's, what the, that's their take on a Wendigo. Ah. Yeah. For whatever yeah. reason, like I can see I'm your bookcase behind it. Vi- yeah, I can see your bookcase behind it. Yeah. No, I don't have the bookcase up. I, I know, I but I can off. see it on the comic when you held the comic up. That was weird. Oh, wow. Oh, maybe that's the green screen. Oh, okay. That's. I guess I did turn it on. I didn't realize it. Okay, anyway. Um, that was a very green scene. But yeah. No, I mean, um, I really like this. I liked how she defeats Della with the, you know, un. un you know the uncomfortable souls and all that kind of thing, or the the souls that cannot rest, and it's just everyone that she killed coming and attacking her. And uh, I mean, it was beautiful. It was a beautifully told story, and I really liked it. Um, and then we got Ambrose back at the end. Uh, I can't remember Ambrose. <laughs> is that is that her cousin in the other thing or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I I still have not finished watching the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Because well, the series is over with. Just just go ahead and power through it. It'll be worth yeah, it. Yeah, I should, I should, you know. Um, I I, have, I was actually going to get rid of Netflix at one point until my wife said, I still watch British breaking shows on there. Don't not get rid of Netflix. So I said, okay, hon. Um, All right. <laughs> apparently she watches it, so that's, that's good. 
I, I know I know Lilith is sick of DC, but uh, I just mentioned Crime Syndicate number one. I picked, I wasn't going to pick it. I up. wanted to pick that book up so much. I do have the digital version, but I'm not reading it. You know, I have to, I have to get things. It's, it's, it's worth it. I mean, it's only a six-issue uh, series, so it's like... But and again, they're rebooting. Does it matter at the at the in the universe at large, though? That's that's my question. No, they're basically building up this new what is it Earth three or whatever the crime syndicate's Earth is. Because I mean, it, there's some funny stuff. Because like in the beginning, I guess they show as a kid, you know, Ultraman killed Kennedy. Oh, it wasn't even a question. He just like he's like floating in midair and just like he visions him in the chest. It's just like <laughs> he kills Kennedy. So and then. See, it, what? Oh, I was going to say, I actually liked the Crime Syndicate. I didn't even realize that came out this week. Maybe yeah. it was all gone in my uh, in my shop, but... um, Like I said, it's only so a six, six-issue miniseries. That's not like a big, you know... People are probably waiting for the trade on that one, for sure. Maybe, yeah. I mean... I, I saw a yeah. bunch in my shop. Because that was actually... I was trying to think of what it was that... Um, that Zack Snyder should... Like, if they had given Zack Snyder the Crime Syndicate of America to do that story, I think he would have universed yeah. the heck out of that. That would have been better. Uh, yeah, it's like that, this thing. You gotta, you gotta steer into your own curves. You gotta know what this guy's skills are and how to help him tell a story. And you know, this is a broken universe because you know who the president of the United States is. Who? Okay. Huh? The, okay. No. 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 The pre- the White House. <laughs> the White House, of course, isn't in Washington D.C. because Washington wasn't the first American president. The first American president was Benedict Arnold. So the White, yes! House, the White House is in he Arnold. Your boys! The White House. <laughs> Yes, the White House is in Arnold, D.C. Yeah, so, uh, yes, the, you know it's Broken Universe because the president is Oliver Queen. Oh, oh damn. We're in trouble now, boys. Uh, how have we failed you? I um, mean, I mean they even, he's in the Oval Office getting tied up by uh, Superwoman. Yeah. Uh. Nice. That's my boy. Oh, because it wouldn't be an evil universe without weird sex stuff. Well, it wouldn't be Oliver, uh, Qu- it wouldn't be Oliver Queen without weird sex stuff. Yes. Um, yeah, have you seen the cover of the Black Canary and uh, Green Arrow wedding? Just saying, it makes sense. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I, I, you know, that was always that, I love that idea of the evil, because that's actually, that goes back to like the first introduction of the Crime Syndicate of America, where actually, it's a world where Benedict Arnold, you know, did, the, they actually go through like histories. Yeah. This is where all the evil people were Lincoln shot uh, President uh, John Wilkes Booth. I mean, all it's that. always <laughs> inter- it's always interesting because it's DC's version of the Mirror Universe. Oh, <laughs> <and burn. laughs> yes. I mean, if this was any more Mirror Universe, they'd all have goatees and stuff. Exactly, and uh, that's good. So, you know, Owl Man's doing well, and everyone that's. I'm gonna have to pick up. I'll, I'll probably end up reading it before the five year hiatus. Oh yeah. Oh oh. Did you uh, did you guys see that? Yeah. During uh, switching the Marvel he- during Heroes Reborn, I guess Gwen Stacy's getting her own book. But uh, since there's no Spider Gwen, yeah. Since there's no Spider Man, she's Night Gwen. She's basically like Nighthawk's Batgirl. She's gonna be Nighthawk's oh, cool. Batgirl. Yeah. And I don't know if it said she's gonna have like a drug problem and stuff. But, you know, because darker universe. Yeah. Wait a minute, Phil. Back to DC real quick. Swamp Thing number one. I did pick it up. I didn't read it though. I almost. I have to support Swamp Thing. I was so. thinking about it because it was a small week, but I didn't. Uh, so you did read it? No, I didn't read it yet, but I did pick it up. Support Swamp Thing. We need more Swamp Thing. Yeah, I might actually go back <laughs> pick that up. But yeah, because I think there's not like another limited or whatever. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Or you could just pick up Avengers versus Man Thing, the original Swamp Thing. <laughs> eh, debatable, but okay. <laughs> Hit him right in the face. Both a rip off of the heat. But, um... <laughs> Hit him right in the face with that man thing. <laughs> hey, giant sized man thing. <laughs> if you've got a giant sized man thing, what are you doing reading comics? I don't want to show it to people. That's all I'm saying. I better hear that drop. I better hear that, fellow. Not unsolicited. But you should say, if you would like to see a giant-sized man thing, it's right around this corner. And then people can go around the corner and say, oh, it's a giant-sized man thing. Just like I wanted to see. Yeah, get, get this out of your system before next week, kids, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so yes, so I think we should wrap this up. So yes, next yep. week for our big 200th episode, we, we will be joined by, yes, that's right, kids, special guest, Rob Master Doom Southgate. I get so much right. To talk all things DC and how we would set right the DC uh, multiverse, you know, comics, TV, movies, the whole shebang. 
And I'm sure I'm sure Rob will have thoughts on the Snyder Cut. Well, I I, I would assume Rob will have thoughts on everything. I get so much right. Uh, <clears throat> oh, we got big stuff coming. So yeah, that'll be 200. And then for episode 201, Lilith will be uh, MIA. So uh, that's the week Falcon and Winter Soldier debuts. So joining Charlie Esser and myself to talk Falcon and Winter Soldier will be Ray from Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Hey, Ray, if you're listening... Get your wine, get your tank top. Do not disappoint me. Whoa, that's pretty damn big. Do I do this episode topless again? No, 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 no. Do I get to do this episode topless again? I mean... Save the, save the, free the nipples on Patreon. Make them pay for it. Yeah, huh? come on. Don't, don't, don't give it away for free, Charlie Asser. Make them pay. Make I them don't want to make them pay. This is for everyone. <laughs> what a slut. Hey, no such shame here. I don't. shame me. But, but so, yeah, that'll be 201, and then, uh, like, unfortunately, like I said, episode 202, when Lilith comes back, we're going to have to do Snyder Cut, so. <sighs> I gotta buy a whole bunch of alcohol. Oh, please, like, that house never has, doesn't have alcohol in it. at the store. I need brown liquor. Y'all know I don't drink brown liquor very rarely now, since the pandemic hit. I do drink a little brown liquor, but it's going to be all brown liquor for the Snyder Cut. Hennessy, sponsor me. <laughs> All right, so yes, yeah, so, yeah, plenty of good stuff coming up next week. Rob Southgate's talk all DC. Two weeks Falcon Winter Soldier, and then the Snyder Cut in three weeks. So send your thoughts on all of it. We will read it. We will play it. Email us capesandlunatics at the gmail dot com, uh, or call the <laughs> voicemail. Nah, yeah, there's no done there. Uh, call the voice. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't confuse them, Phil. They're gonna be there. It doesn't go through. It keeps getting kicked back because they put the G- the la uh, in there, and they, they don't. Know. Capes and lunatics <laughs> at gmail dot com. Air call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can follow. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Find links to all of our various social medias. Links to this YouTube channel, go subscribe. Links to the Patreon, where you can see Charlie Esser naked. Uh, links to merch, all in one place. Say hi, Jordan. That's frontal, right. Not full frontal. Unless you pay extra. That's the... Topless. Fourth tier. That's T-O-P-L-E-S-S. Yeah, he'll do it when you get there. Anyway, so yes, find everything at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support the sponsors. Tweaked Audio... You know you're going to want to hear uh, Rob Southgate next week in crystal clear HD audio. So go get yourself some tweaked audio. You have a week. And, of course, you can always uh, solve a cold case. Yes. That's fun for you. And I'm sorry, I cut you off before you did the coupon code, Southgate, at tweaked, which is likewise usable at uh, huntingkiller.com, where you can get uh, help Michelle Gray solve a cold case. I don't want any of that. I like to read. What do you got? Well, I'm glad you asked Little Hellfire. You could go pick up Pod Life the Book, now in digital and paperback, brought to you by uh, the professional podcasters of the Southgate Media Group and. The third best Southgate. Uh, <laughs> Rob Southgate. <laughs> oh, we gotta, out. we're going to do this to his face next week. Uh, and you will find out I am right so much more often than I'm wrong. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so you can find that and so much more. Well, because. Well, if you make daily trips to Amazon like Lil does, use uh, the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the network, and sponsor his appearance next week, Rob Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain. So it says a lot Master of money for Doom. Him, you know. Nice mustache, Charlie. I know. You think, that's, you, think you get you. this for free? Why did your eye drift over to my box? All right, Lilith, where can the people send you brown liquor? <laughs> oh god if you guys want to uh live tweet with me while i uh watch batwoman and the flash this season at little hellfire if you want to hang out with me on instagram at little hellfire 86 if you're in need of spicy memes at little hellfire 69 on tiktok and the gram smash it all right charlie yes sir well you know i know that the millennials don't use the emails anymore that's why <laughs> When you say the Gmail, it mm. really confuses them because they don't. That's not their thing. They, what is an right email? Not, not what, I thought it was a Gmail. What are you talking about? Uh, they can do so just like their grandfathers and 
grandmothers once did back in the 90s. At Charlie Esser, that, oh no, sorry, at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. I don't even know my own address. And of course, follow me on Twitter as I too try to live tweet Batwoman and Lois, uh, or Superman and uh, Lois, Lois, yeah, that's the show when I remember when that's on. And of course, DuckTales, a woohoo, we have Wuzzles, people. Wuzzles are real. At Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. Thank you, Moz. And if we do not get an extended DuckTales averse out of this. Where is my rescue rangers? Where is my Darkwing Duck? duck? <laughs> Yeah, Have a good night. They were establishing it, man. I want my freaking Wuzzles back. I wanted to see just life on Wuzzle Island once they free. Um, uh, Disney after the universe. Disney after the universe. Indeed. We need Indeed. it, man. We need it. Indeed. Wuzzles were actually Indeed. a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, bring back Saturday morning cartoons. Was well, you got to go to MeTV for that. Um, <laughs> At seven AM Not sponsored. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's when the that's when the host comes out, which you know, it's fine. But um no, I I loved the wuzzles like inappropriately for a boy of my age. Um but yeah, I love the wuzzles. They were the best show. Because, you know, gender norms, but it was a girl's toy, but I loved it, okay. I also There's like no such thing as a girl's toy or a boy's toy. You like the toy you play. It was in the eighties. They had old signs like you know where you're tired boys. Yeah, I know, gee, I you poor thing. You poor thing. Alright everyone. For another week, we have been your tapes. Episode Emphasis on Lunatics! <laughs> That's right, kids. Remember, when one week drops South Gate. Two weeks, Falcon Winter Soldier, and then three weeks. Uh, Snyder Cut! Snyder Cut! Get your booze ready, people! Did you say booze? I said booze! Okay. <laughs> I thought you were talking to Charlie. I have no! Oh, I was gonna say, I thought you were talking to Charlie for a second. <laughs> His knockers are fully crossed. Prepare the way for the South Gate. I am Connor from the House of L. And I am Ray from the House of Zod. We are two of the many, many survivors of Krypton's destruction, and we have made our home in Australia, and dare I say have become Australians, for better or worse. But we have also decided to read Superman comics, read Superman books, watch Superman shows, cartoons, movies, basically everything Superman, and from an Australian perspective as well. Whether you're a seasoned fan, like me, or whether you are coming in fresh, wide-eyed, and wanting to learn more like me, then this podcast is for you. Join us for our bi-weekly adventures available on all good podcast catches. So just search for Last Sons of Krypton, a Superman podcast. We'll be coming to you from Australia, or some cosmic dimension, wherever we are that week. Up, 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 up and, and away! away.